بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد سنبي بإذن الله تعالى is the uh, Al-Majlis Al-Thamin the eighth sitting from the book of uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikh Al-Thamin Rahmanullah is uh, Manjalis Ramadan and uh, his continuation inshallah is Al-Fi Baqiyati Aqsam Al-Nas so continuing from what I read uh, two days ago and what Brother Shai read yesterday, uh, he mentioned that um, on the naming remaining types of people in regards to fasting and the rulings and making up of the fast. So inshallah we'll go through that today. So Bismillah. Alhamdulillahi al wahidi al adim al jabbar al qadir al qawi al qahar المتعالي المتعالي أن أن تدركه الخواتم والأبصار وسم كل مخلوق بس نعم بسمعة بسمعة الافتقار وأظهر أثار قدرته بتصريف الليل والنهار يسمع أني أني المدنف يشكو ما به من الأضرار ويمسر دبيب النملة السوداء في الليلة الظلماء الظلماء على الغار ويعلم خفية الضمائر ومقنون الأسرار. So here uh, just gonna go through that bit first and then we'll carry on. So here the Sheikh is uh, mentioning in his uh, introduction to this that he mentions all praise. It belongs to Allah, the one, the most great, the almighty, uh, the one, the all able, uh, the most powerful, the subduer, um, the one, uh, the most high from uh, high from any uh, people, uh, any, um, any, uh, how would you say, any high above all thoughts and visions reaching him. Uh, and he, um, and he, say here, and he is, um, and he has designated every creature with deficiency, with need. So here, and he's designated uh, all all creatures with need. And um, here he says, and then he is, um, is. Uh, and, the, and he has shown the the remnants of the, uh, the traces of his ability uh, in the, his ability in the alternation of the night and the day, um, and he can hear the whimpering and the moans of the one. Who is ill, severely ill, and he's complaining of the harms that he experiences, and he is able to see. So that's the, he's able to hear the side, uh, one of the attributes of Allah, all hearing, and then, and he's able to see uh, the moon of the the black ant on a black rock on a dark, really dark night in a dark cave. Then he knows what is inside our hearts, on our secrets. So, so that, that's what we mentioned. He knows the secrets of the hearts. Then, then he mentioned sifatuhu kadatihi. So his attributes, attributes of Allah, are like his essence. What do we mean by that? That Allah's attributes are not like the creation, and it's like his essence. While mushabbihatu kuffar, and those from the people who liken Allah's attributes or his essence to the creation. They are the disbelievers here. نُقِرُّ بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ عَلَى مَا جَاءَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالْأَخْبَارِ And we affirm for Allah what he described himself with uh, from what came from the what came in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. So then the uh, Shaykh he quotes the Qur'an ayah which is أَفَمَنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانُهُ عَلَى تَقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانِ خَيْرٌ أَمَّنْ أسس بنيانه على شفاء جرف حار 
Uh, so here, the Sheikh he mentioned that that's a Surah, it's a Surah Toba, Surah, Surah Toba, uh, verse 109. So if you read the meaning of that, it means, um, is it, is it then he who laid the foundation of his building with piety to Allah and his good pleasure better? Or who or he who laid the foundation of his building on the brink of an undetermined precipice, ready to com uh, crumble down? So um, then the Sheikh he says, Ahmaduhu subhanahu alal masari wa alal madari wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu al muf المتفرد بالخلق والتدبير من بنش القرآن وربك يخلق ما يشاء ويختار وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أفضل الأنبياء الأطهار صلى الله عليه وعلى أبي بكر رفيقه في الغار وعلى أمر قام الكفار وعلى أثمان شهيد الدار وعلى علي القائم بالأصحار بالأسحاري وعلى آله وأصحابه خصوصا المحاجرين والأنصار والسلم تسليما. So here uh, the Sheikh then he mentions that um, he appraised him here yeah, uh, Subhanahu wa Taala meaning Allah uh, upon the good and the harm and I bear witness that there is no worthy worship except Allah alone that He has no partners. And he alone uh, is the one who creates, and he alone is the one who um, he organizes and takes care of all of affairs. Yeah? So here he is the one who um, is in charge of that, to dispose of all the affairs. And then uh, Allah says, وَرَبُّكَ يَحْنُكُ And your Lord creates whoever he wills and chooses. So he is the one who, who chooses and he's the one who creates. Well, and then he said, I bear witness that none has, uh, none has the, and I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's slave and messenger and he's the best of the Anbiya, the pure Anbiya. Yeah? The Anbiya, all of them being pure. Uh, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon uh, Abu Bakr, his companion in the cave, and upon Umar. The, uh, the suppressor of the disbelievers and upon Uthman, the one who attained martyrdom in his house, where he was killed in his house, and upon Ali, uh, who established the prayers at night, and uh, upon his uh, family and his companions, especially uh, specifying the Muhajirin, the, the ones who migrated from Mecca to Medina, and the Ansar, the people of uh, Medina who aided them. Uh, you know, with salam. So then the Sheikh begins, he says, Ikhwani, my brothers, kaddamna al kalam and an sabati aksamin min aksam in nas fisiyami wa hadihi bakiyatul aksami. So he said, my brothers, we have preceded, you know, have a speech preceded uh, about the seven types of people um, when it comes to fasting. And we here we're going to mention the remaining. So here we mentioned again previously. Uh, I mentioned two days ago we met, uh, began with the types of people uh, and their rulings, uh, and then uh, Brother Sha uh, Shai uh, continued yesterday, and we got up to seven. So today we're going to complete this. Uh, so here was the al qismu al thamin. So al al qismu al thamin, which is the eighth category. So the Sheikh mentioned Al Haidu, Fayyhum Aleha, Fayyhum Aleha Siyamu, Wala Yasehu Minha, the call in the Misa Asalam, in the Sa, Mara Aitu Min, Nakisat, Aklin, Wadin, Adhabal, Adhab, the Lubbil, the Lubbil Rajuli, Al Hazimi, Min Ehda Kunna, Kunna Wama, Nuksan, Aklina, Wadinina, Ya Rasulullah. قال أليس شهادة المرأة مثل نصف نصف شهادة الرجل قلنا بلى قال فذلك نقصان أقلها أليس إذا حادت لم تصلي ولم تصوم قلنا بلى قال فذلك من من نقصان دينها
muttafaqun alayhi. So here, uh, the Sheikh he mentions uh, that um, the eighth category is the uh, woman when she is menstruating. So it's forbidden for her to fast, and it's not correct. It's not accepted, uh, and it's according to the uh, the saying of the Prophet ﷺ in the Hadith uh, when he addressed the women, and he said um, that I have not seen you know uh, anyone de- more deficient in intelligence and religion. Yeah, um, so that. Uh, that is able to remove the understanding of a prudent man, the moon of you. Yeah. Uh, so here, there's a few benefits here that the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned two differences from themselves, which was the deficiency in the intelligence and in the religion. And the, Shaykh, uh, the, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will mention in this hadith what that is. And then he mentioned another thing, that the effect that they can have is that they can uh, remove the understanding of a man with intelligence and prudent man, they can re- remove, affect him. And this is so true that you can see a man who's so intelligent and strong, but when a woman, she can have that effect and he will do some crazy things for a woman. And subhanAllah, we see this in this day, uh, in this day of ours as well. So then uh, the women, the Sahabiyat, yeah, may Allah be pleased with them, they asked, oh, oh, my, oh, messenger, not like the feminists of today, they were saying, oh, well, why is this mentioned and why is that? No, they actually asked the Prophet and they didn't complain. They said, what is the deficiency in our uh, intelligence and our, in, a, in our religion, oh, messenger of Allah? So the Prophet said, isn't it, isn't it that the witness of one of the women is equal to half that of a man? So because for a witness we need one man and two women are equal to one man and we know that. Yeah? And there are many reasons behind that that other scholars mention about the emotional aspect and uh, you know the trustworthiness and all sorts of other reasons. Yeah? So, um, so then the uh, women said uh, yes. So they affirmed that. They didn't uh, reject that. So then the Prophet said and that is the deficiency in your intelligence for the women. And then he said, Alaysa ida hadith lam tusalli wa lam tusab. So, so, lam ta, uh, tasum. Yeah. So, and he, the Prophet said, isn't it so that if you were to menstruate, any one of the women were to menstruate, that you do not pray and you do not fast. So this is the point here, connecting this, to this type of is that the women do not fast, so they do not pray, but they, and they also do not fast. And this, the women, the Sahabiyat, Rabbi may Allah be pleased with them, they said yes. Yeah. So the Prophet said that is from the deficiency in your religion, and that is muttafaqun alayhi Bukhari Muslim. So it's an authentic hadith. Yeah. So here, the Sheikh mentions wal khaydu dhamu tabi'i so he mentions, he says that uh, and uh, menstruation is the natural growth that comes out from a woman in uh, specified days, particular days in the month. So then he mentions, so here the Sheikh mentioned so that if if um, menstruation of blood it becomes apparent to uh, appears uh, and the woman is fasting and even if it's by a few moments before uh, the um, the you know the the fast the the setting of the sun so just before Maghrib and Maghrib so before sunset just before sunset a few moments maybe a minute yeah even before a minute if that happens on during the day obviously more uh, even more so 
uh, that uh, fast has been uh, you know nullified and uh, it is obligatory upon her binding upon her to make that fast talk except and that is for in Ramadan but except for if she's fasting optional fast for example she's fasting Monday or Thursday in each of the week or she's fasting the light days yeah is the third, either the 14th or the 15th of each month or she's fasting any other like uh, the six fast of Ramadan or the fast in uh, you know Muharram yeah uh, the 9th of the 10th or 10th of the 11th or, any, or the fast of the Yom Al-Arafah the 9th yeah, day of the Dhul Hijjah so she wouldn't make that up if she wanted to uh, uh, it's not wajib to make that up because it's an optional fast then the Sheikh mentions وَإِذَا أَحْرَتْ مِنَ الْحَيْدِ مِنَ الْحَيْدِ فِي أَثْنَاءِ رَمَدَانَ لَمْ يَصِحَ سَوْمُهَا بَقِيَةُ الْيَوْمِ لِوَجُودِ مَا يُنَافِي الصِّيَامَ فِي حَقِّهَا فِي أَوْلِ النَّهَارِ وَحَلْ يَلْزِمُهَا الْإِمْسَاقُ بَقِيَةُ الْيَوْمِ فِيهِ خِلَافٌ بَيْنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ سَبَقَ ذِكْرُهُ فِي فِي الْمُسَافِرِ so here the Sheikh then he goes on to mention that if a woman yeah if a woman um, you know is purified yeah she purifies herself from she's the, the, the menstruation has been complete and she's had a well and she she uh, uh, menstruation stopped during Ramadan, yeah. So it's just stop during Ramadan. She purified, purified herself. Then it is not uh, right for her. So here, so if she purifies from the bleeding of the of the day, the time of the Ramadan, her fasting in the morning hours of that day is invalid because the existence of the, obs- uh, the, the thing that prevents her. From fasting in the beginning of the day so yeah for example in one of the days that she has you know purified herself and it's after though after the taking of uh, you know of uh, suhoor so then she doesn't have to fast that day because she wasn't purified at the time of fasting then uh, the question the sheikh uh, strikes is uh, is it binding upon her to stop eating though for the remaining of the day? He, he mentions that uh, in this there's a differing uh, among the scholars uh, and he's mentioned previously what I would like to mention the Ba'un who's tra- uh, his traveler uh, uh, after his arrival to his homeland. You know, the same, there's the, the difference upon that whether she has to stop eating or she can continue eating. Then the Sheikh mentions وَإِذَا تَحُرَتْ فِي اللَّيْلِ فِي رَمَدَانِ وَلَوْ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ لِلَّهْذَا وَجَبَ عَلَيْهَا سَوْمْ لِأَنَّهَا مِنْ أَحْلِ السِّيَامِ وَلَيْسَ فِيهَا مَا يَمْنَعُهُ فَوَجَبَ عَلَيْهَا السِّيَامِ So then the Sheikh mentions that if she is purified at night time, here yeah, after the fast is open in the night time, she, she is now pure. She doesn't no longer have any bleeding. And she's uh, she's okay to fast. So now, as long as it's before Fajr, so even if it's by a minute before before the time of Sahur has come, yeah. Uh, so even if it's by a minute, then it's obligatory, obligatory upon her uh, to fast uh, because now she's from the people that uh, fasting is obligatory upon, and she doesn't have no nothing that prevents her from fasting. Then the Sheikh said, وَيَسِحُ صَوْمُهُ صَوْمُهَا هِنَا إِذِمْ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَقْتَصِلْ إِلَّا بَادَ تُلُوْ الْفَجْرِ كَالْجُنُبِ إِذَا صَامَ وَلَمْ يَقْتَصِلْ إِلَّا بَادَ تُلُوْ الْفَجْرِ فَإِنَّهُ يَسِحْ صَوْمُهُ So then the Sheikh mentioned, and he's okay for her, and he's correct for her to fast, even if she hasn't taken a bath, a bath to purify herself uh, from uh, the remnants of the blood. So even then, he's still okay for her to fast and then take the bath after uh, you know except uh, you know uh, she can take it after uh, the closing of the fast yeah? so it's the same ruling as the one who 
he's in Janaba. You know, uh, if he, he can fast and you know make the intention and you know close his fast, and he can uh, take a bath after that and pray Fajr. So, uh, so after the, after Fajr comes comes in. So he, the fasting is correct, and that is according to Likoli Aisha radiyallahu anha. So that's according to the speech of Aisha radiyallahu. May Allah be pleased with her. When she said, "Can a Nabi Sallam used to be who Juruban bin Jamaa'in ghairi ihtilam thumma yusumu fi Ramadan muttafaqna lay?" When she said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to uh, get up uh, in the state of major impurity, you know, which was uh, uh, having relations from uh, having relations uh, without, you know, being a, a, a dream, you know, wet dream, and then he would uh, fast. Ramadan, and that is agreed by uh, Bukhari Muslim. So he fast Ramadan, he he make the intention and he uh, complete his fast, and then he make you know they take the ghusl and then fast. Uh, we pray Fajr. So that's what it means here. One nufasa u kalhaidi fi jami 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 ma taqaddim. So and then the postpartum bleeding, the woman after she gives birth, she has a postpartum bleeding. Then the ruling for the woman. Is the same as as the one who uh, has menstruation. So all of everything that we mentioned previously applies to her. Then the, the Sheikh mentions why يجب عليها القضاء بعدد الأيام التي فاتتها لقول لقوله تعالى فإدة من أيام أخر. So then it is obligatory upon the woman who postpartum bleeding as well as the one who has menstruation to make up the days uh, that she has missed uh, for according to the speech of Allah where Allah mentions uh, yeah. so here where it mentions um, and then we say uh, and for no uh, So uh, the num number of days from other days, should, uh, and for those who cannot fast with difficulty, uh, it mentions that um, they should make up for a number of other days outside of Ramadan. So that's what it means. Um, so that is what Baqarah was 184. Then the Sheikh mentioned, "Was so anha ma balu al haidi." تقضي الصوم ولا تقضي الصلاة قال كان يصيبنا ذلك فنؤمر بقضاء الصوم ولا نؤمر بقضاء الصلاة رواه مسلم So here then he mentions that Aisha رضي الله عنها may Allah be pleased with her was asked yeah, why are the women need to make up uh, for the ministry you know for the fasting of uh, when they are menstruating, whereby they don't have to make up the salah, you know, the five daily prayers, they don't have to make them up when they are menstruating. So Aisha, radiallahu anha, may, may Allah be clear, said, we were afflicted by, you know, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, uh, by uh, menstruation, and we were commanded with making up the fast, and we weren't commanded with making up the salah. And that's mentioned, but in by uh, my Muslim, yeah, so it's Sahih. So that was obviously she's commanding, meaning command by Allah, and she was informed by the uh, Prophet and uh, the scholars agree upon that. Yeah. So the woman, when when she has a menstruation throughout the year, she doesn't make up the prayer. She only makes up the fasting of Ramadan. So then the, the Sheikh he goes on to so we complete the eighth uh, type of uh, you know, the eighth. Uh, Type of people, the, and now we say mention akithnu atasi. So the ninth type, the category, the ninth category. So here the Sheikh mentions al maratu ida kanat murdi'an aw hamilan hafat ala nafsiha aw ala al ala al walad min al sawm fa innaha tufthiru li hadith Anas ibn Malik al Kabi radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم inna Allah وَدَعَ أَنَّ الْمُسَافِرَ شَطْرَ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَنَّ الْمُسَافِرَ وَأَنَّ الْمُسَافِرَ وَالْحَامِلَ 
والمرضع الصوم او او الصيام اخرجه الخمسه وهذا لفظ من ماجا ويلزمها القضاء بعدد الايام التي افطرت 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 هنا يتيسر لها ذلك ويزول عنها الخوف كالمريض اذا مريع So here the sheikh he mentions that uh, a, a woman if she is breastfeeding or she is pregnant and she fears for herself basically weakness because uh, you know it takes out a lot for a woman because she's in, in charge of two people there whether she's pregnant you know she's got have enough uh, food for her and the baby and whether it's uh, breastfeeding as well she's got to have enough food to produce breast milk so when she so she fears for herself or or the child because of the fasting then she basically breaks the fast or she doesn't fast at all and that's according to the hadith of Anas bin Malik al Kabi may Allah be pleased with him that he said that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that um, God, Allah has omitted half the prayer to the traveler. So when the traveler is praying, you have to pray less. So for example, Fajr, obviously you still pray two rakah. But the Prophet ﷺ will still pray the Sunnah even when he was uh, traveling. But for the other prayers, for example, we have the Dhor, the Asr, and the Isha. The Maghrib is three. You can't make it anymore. You can't pray one and a half. So the ones that you can pray, small amount, so you can pray for, Uh, Zohar, you can pray two rakah. Yeah? For Asr, you can pray two rakah. For Isha, you can pray two rakah. That's what it means. Yeah? That Allah has omitted half the prayer to the traveler. And fasting to the traveler and the woman who is suckling an infant, breastfeeding, and the woman who is pregnant. And that was mentioned by Abu Da'ud, Tirmahi, and Nisa'i, and Ibn Majah. And, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it's... Uh, Ibn Majah who has transmitted this one, this particular narration and that, uh, the, the ruling is, is Hassan so it's uh, a good hadith to rely on uh, and then it's binding upon the person that uh, you know that they make up the fast uh, for other days uh, if they are not fasting when Allah makes it easy for them and that you know that, that thing that's stopping them that fear Uh, is removed, for example, the, uh, they're no longer breastfeeding, or it's a bit more easier. Uh, the ki kids started eating more solid foods, so it might be easier. Or the woman has delivered the baby, it becomes easy. Or like a sick person, if a person was sick previously, he make up the uh, days uh, when if he's cured. You know, Allah cures him. Yeah? Um, so that is the ninth category of people, which is the breastfeeding and the pregnant. Then we go on to the Al-Qismu al qismu al ashir the tenth category of, us, uh, of the people fasting. Man ihtaja lil fitri li daf ad-durura ghayrihi ka in kad ma'sumin min gharqi aw hariqin aw hadamin aw nahu dharik fa idha kana la yumkinhu inqaduhu illa bi taqwi bi taqwi bi taqwi bi taqwi bi taqwi عليه بالعقل والشرب جاز له الفطر بل وجب الفطر هنا إذن لأن إنقاذ المعصوم من الحركة واجب وما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فهو واجب يلزمه قضاء ما أفطره. So here is a unique category the Sheikh mentions and that is the one who needs to break his fast to uh, for 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 sake for sake of a uh, um, 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 a necessity yeah? uh, for example uh, for for a necessity to save someone else either from drowning or from burn in a burning building for example to save that person and he's not able to do that you know the expend that effort of jumping into water he can't drink something or he's got to eat something To, you know, basically, so that he can strengthen his body, so he can be able to do that. So then, for that, in that case, 
that he's able to drink and eat and drink, so break his fast because uh, he, rather it's wajib, it's obligatory upon him to break his fast in that circumstance. So because uh, you know saving someone from uh, destruction is obligatory in the religion, and you know whatever you can't complete from a wajib, except by way of that, uh, except for by way of it, it becomes wajib. So if you can't, you know, save someone's life, except by, uh, you know, opening your uh, fast, breaking your fast, then it becomes wajib. Uh, and then it's obligatory upon that person, for example, there's a building, some, uh, you know, some fire, and there's some people who need saving, and you, you know, you quickly can, you know, take some drink and food, and because it's going to take you time to get go up there and save them, it's going to take a lot of effort, or you're going to jump in to save them, or any other case of that. Then you have to, you have to, you know, you you got the reward of saving them and the effort and the niyyah, and then but you have to make up that day, so that's fine. And then the sheikh goes another example of that. And then the sheikh goes another example of that. And then the sheikh كان ذلك في السفر أو في بلده إذا حضره الأدو لأن في ذلك دفاع عن المسلمين وإعلاء لكلمة الله عز وجل وفي صحيح مسلم عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال سافرنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى مكة ونحن سو إنسان ونحن سيام سو هي إنسان uh, let's see what we get here. Let's see what we got here. So here he said, uh, "Yeah, suyab, manahlu suyab, fa nazalna manzalan." فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنكم قد دنوتم من أدوبكم والفطر أقوى لكم فكانت رخصة فمنا من صام ومن أفطر. ثم نزلنا منزلا آخر فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنكم مصبه أدوكم والفطر أقوى لكم فأفطروا وكانت أزمة فأفطرنا وفي هذا الحديث إيماء, إيماء إلى أن القوة على القتال سبب مستقل غير غير الصفر لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جعل إلا الأمر بالفطر القوة على قتال الأدو دون السفر لذلك لم يأمرهم بالفطر في المنزل الأول. So here there's a long hadith and there's a great benefit in this. So here uh, the uh, the sheikh mentions uh, that when, when uh, the example of that is the need to break the fast to uh, to strengthen the body uh, in jihad in the path of Allah so when you fight in jihad and it's the month of Ramadan you can break your fast to strengthen your body because in that fighting you're fighting the enemy and when you break your fast uh, you can make it up uh, with all the fast uh, so uh, and you know it's the same like in a fasting and in traveling uh, in a land so or he's whether he's you know in his own land so if you're fighting the, your enemy whether you're traveling and it's offensive jihad or when you're defensive when you're in your own land uh, you can still uh, break your fast uh, because in there is a defense of the Muslims and that is a great uh, need the great need is to defend the Muslims and to raise the kalima that will raise the word of Allah yeah, as well, the kalima tawheed. Yeah, so and in the Sahih Muslim, so it's Sahih Hadith from the narration of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, another noble companion, they mentioned that we traveled with the Prophet Sallam, to Makkah. So remember where they were from? They were from Medina. So Makkah is not their land, they traveled to Makkah, and we were fasting. So we descended a into a place. And the Prophet said to us, 
indeed you have come near to your enemy. So the breaking your fast will be better for you. It will make you str it'll stronger for you. Stronger for your bodies. So he didn't say break it. He didn't command them with it. He gave them option first. So then he said that was a, um, a, a like a, it's like a, um, something uh, a ease that's granted by Allah. Yeah. And then from, from us. Sorry, was he, uh, uh, oh, sorry. I just jumped in. Uh, yeah. Concession, concession. Uh, concession, yeah. So it was a concession uh, from Allah, yeah. So the uh, so the Prophet some said that indeed you have come near to your enemies, and uh, breaking the fast is you know more stronger for your body, for better for you, uh, and is a concession uh, from Allah. So then from us. It are those who can remain fasting. So they, they knew his option from uh, from the messenger of Allah. So, so they kind of carried on fasting and from, from those who broke the fast. Then we descended another air, a place and uh, the messenger of Allah uh, said this time, he said, إِنَّكُمْ مُسَبِّهُ أَدُوِّكُمْ yeah? So, وَالْفِتْرُ أَقْوَى لَكُمْ فَافْتَرُوا وَكَانَتْ أَزْمَةً so here, this time, first of all, they were given the option. Yeah. Uh, then the second time, he said, um, you will be, uh, you won't give an option. This time, the Prophet said, you'll be moving, meeting your enemy in the morning. So breaking your fast is more uh, better for you in terms of energy. Therefore, break your fast. So now he, the Prophet said, break your fast. It was command. It then became obligatory upon us to break our fast, and it was a crisis, as you said, you know, for them. So, uh, so sorry, it was uh, for to strengthen their bodies. So, uh, the Prophet commanded them, and they all broke the fast. And so, in this uh, hadith, is an indication uh, that uh, you know, for strengthening your body upon fighting is a reason, independent reason, other than uh, traveling, that the Prophet gave. As a exception, uh, as a, a reason uh, for breaking one's fast, so to strengthen your body upon fighting your enemy, and with that, and not just traveling, and that is, uh, and he did not command them in the first instance uh, with the uh, breaking the fast. Uh, rather, it was in the second instance when he knew that um, they they all needed it. Um, that's when he commanded them. With the first, the first time he gave the option, but when he realized that there was more difficulty and they needed to, he commanded them with breaking the fast. So that is the reason. Uh, so that is the proof for that. So, for example, saving the the point comes back that saving someone when he's drowning or burning in a fire or in a car accident, and you need to spend a, a lot of effort to you know save them, then you can break your fast. So that is the proof. So كُلُّ مَنْ جَازَ لَهُ الْفِتْرَ بسبب مما تقدم فإنه لا لا ينكر عليه إعلان فطره إذا كان سببه ظاهرا كالمريض والكبير الذي لا يستطيع الصوم وأما إن كان سبب فطره خفيا كالحائد ومن أنقذ معصوما من حلقة فإنه يفطر سرا ولا يؤلم فطره لألا يجر so here uh, the Sheikh mentions here that all of the uh, reasons that we mentioned that it was permissible in the last 10 uh, categories yeah? uh, or you know uh, that the other in the, in the previous categories that we mentioned today, and all the other ones that we mentioned, whether it's a, a person sick or traveling, or you know, uh, me and my brother Shad mentioned in the past few days, uh, these all of those, so you don't say all that, uh, you know, that you don't rebuke the person uh, from saying that they're not fasting openly uh, if there's a reason that is apparent, you know. So, uh, for example, he's sick or he's old in age. And he can't fast. So there's no harm in saying, oh, for example, 
if it, you know they, they they have uh, menstruation or that she's pregnant or she's uh, breastfeeding or uh, you know any of the other reasons that we mentioned. Uh, so uh, but then there's no reason in uh, there's no harm in mentioning. But if the person uh, is you know is not fasting uh, because of something, sorry. Uh, so uh, so for for uh, menstruation, something hidden, yeah. Uh, and uh, but pregnancy isn't, but yeah, something like menstruation or other hidden uh, factors. Uh, for example, he's saving someone who needs to be saved from destruction. Uh, then uh, he should break his fast and not say that he's uh, not fasting. So things that are hidden, you can't tell he's not fasting. Uh, you should hide the fact that you're not fasting, and you shouldn't make it apparent. Uh, that he's not fasting uh, because then people will, you know, blame him, yeah? Uh, so, uh, you know, they accuse him of, oh, look at this guy, he doesn't, you know, fast. And, you know, even if they don't know, because they don't know your reason why you're not fasting. So it can be harmful to your reputation, yeah? And it also, it can deceive the people, like a person who's ignorant. So he thinks that, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's permissible not to eat because of... Uh, you know, without a reason. So he just sees you, that you're not eating in the day, in the day. so he thinks, oh yeah, you know, it's all right for everyone not, uh, not, to, uh, not to fast. So yeah, that's another reason. And then the Sheikh said, وَكُلُّ مِنْ, uh, وَكُلُّ مَنْ لَزِمَهُ الْقَدَاء مِنَ الْأَقْسَامِ السَّابِقَ فَإِنَّهُ يَقْضِي بِعَدَدَ الْأَيَّامِ الَّتِي أَفْتَرَ لِقَوْلِ تَعَالَى فَإِدَّةٌ uh, مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ uh, So the Sheikh mentions for all of the people uh, that uh, are required to uh, make up the fast uh, from the uh, categories of uh, people that we mentioned uh, that, that have preceded, that is upon them uh, to make up those days uh, that they broke the fast or that they couldn't fast. And that is again going back to the Ayan Surah Bakara uh, to, to make up with uh, in, in other days, uh, make up uh, the fast in other days. فَإِنْ أَفْتَرَ جَمِيعَ الشَّحْرِ لَزِمَهُ جَمِيعُ أَيَّامِهِ فَإِنْ كَانَ شَحْرَ ثَلَاثِينَ يَوْمًا لَزِمُ ثَلَاثُونَ يَوْمًا وَإِنْ كَانَ تِسْعَةً وَإِشْرِينَ يَوْمًا لَزِمَهُ تِسْعَةٌ وَإِشْرُونَ يَوْمًا فَقَط So here the Sheikh says that if the person, he didn't fast the whole month, and then he needs to make up the whole month. So if that month was made up of 30 days, then he has to make up 30 days. And if that month was made up of 29 days, then he has to make up 29 days. Yeah. So, And the Sheikh mentions that, um, that is a, a person it's better for him to rush and hurry to make up his fast. Yeah, as soon as uh, you know the reason that prevented him from fasting, the excuse that he had, that as soon as that goes away, then it is better for him to uh, you know complete uh, hasten to completing his uh, fast and free himself from the obligation. Then the Sheikh said, وَيَجُوزُ تَأْخِيرُهُ إِلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ رَمَدَانَ الثَّانِي بِعَدَدَ أَيَّامِ الَّتِي عَلَيْهِ لِقَوْلِ تَعَالَى فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ وَأَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْقِينَ فَمَنْ تَتَوَّعَ So then the Sheikh mentioned how it is permissible to delay the fast until there is left between you and the next Ramadan a number of days that you have missed based on the statement of Allah uh, I make up the number of days you have missed with other days and uh, and upon the ones who are able uh, you know uh, you know, you know uh, who are not able that they pay, they pay a fidya and feed the people poor people uh, and you know so then the sheikh then he said وَمِنْ تَمَامُ الْيُسْرِ تَأْخِيرَ الْقَدَائِهِ فَإِذَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ أَشْرَةُ أَيَّامٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ جَازَ تَأْخِيرُ so 
So uh, then the Sheikh he said, and from the complete of the ease of this relation is the permissibility of delaying the making of the fast. For example, if you have you know ten days left, so you make up the ten days uh, when there's only ten days for next Ramadan, and that's leaving it right up to the limit, obviously. But then the Sheikh he mentions. وَلَا يَجُوزُ تَأْخِيرُ الْقَدَاءِ إِلَىٰ رَمَدَانِ الثَّانِي بِدُونِ أُذُرْ لِقَوْلِ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا كَانَ يَكُونُ عَلَيَّ كَانَ يَكُونُ عَلَيَّ الصَّوْمُ مِنْ رَمَدَانَ فَمَا أَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ أَقْضِيهَا أَقْضِيهِ إِلَّا فِي شَعْبَانِ رَوَى الْبُخَارِي وَلِأَنَّ تَأْخِيرُهُ إِلَىٰ رَمَدَانِ الثَّانِي يُوجِبُ أَنْ يَتَرَاكَمَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمُ فربما يعجز عنه أو يموت ولأن صوم عبادة متكررة فلم يجز تأخيره الأولى إلى وقت الثانية كالسلام then, uh, then the Sheikh mentions and it's not permissible to delay making up the fast to the next Ramadan so it means that when you have one Ramadan a whole year is gone and you come to the second Ramadan and you start the next Ramadan and you haven't made it up without an excuse as Aisha so maybe some people they have long term illnesses and they can't and they didn't have the chance to make it up for whatever reason then, then that's an excuse but without excuse you can't and Aisha radiallahu anha and may Allah be pleased with her the mother of the believers mentioned uh, that there used to be some days of fasting for me to make up and I would not have the chance to make them up until Sha'ban yeah? uh, and that is mentioned in Bukhari and because delaying the uh, making up the fast of Ramadan to the Ramadan of the second Ramadan, it, 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 it basically uh, piles up the fast upon the person, and perhaps the person is unable to make them up, and uh, or he dies you know, before making up them up, and because fasting is an act of worship, yeah. So uh, fasting is an act of worship. Uh, that is repeatedly performed. Yeah, with the career. Yeah, uh, so it's not permissible to delay. Delay, rather, it is better uh, to you know make it up uh, before the second Ramadan comes, like Salah, like the prayer. For it is the marra bihi al uthru hatta mata fala shay alayhi li anna Allahu subhanahu. أوجب عليه إدة من أيام أخرى ولم أخرى ولم يتمكن منها فسقطت عنه كمن مات قبل دخول شهر رمضان لا يلزم صومه. so he said just like salah you need to make the salah before that they add up so many that you know you can't make it difficult. then he mentioned that if it continues that his you know his excuse or his reason for the thing that's prohibiting him from fasting, uh, you know, preventing him from fasting uh, until he dies, then there's nothing upon him. For example, because he has got an excuse for that, as Allah the Most High has obligated upon him a number of days, other days, but then other days he won't be able to make up because his illness or sickness or whatever the uh, reason might be persisted until he died. So, uh, so he wasn't able to make up them. So, uh, so then his obligation has fallen from him. And he, uh, uh, so he, uh, so it's like the one who died before the month of Ramadan come. He is not obligated to make up the fast because he never reached Ramadan. So it's like that person who dies before the month of Ramadan comes. Uh, he's not held responsible for that. So, فَإِن تَمَكَّنَ مِنْ الْقَدَاءِ فَفَرَّتَ فِي حتى مات سامع وليه عنه جميع الأيام التي تمكن من القضائي. so if he was able to make up the days of fasting, but he was neglectful of it until he died, then upon the guardian or you know the next of kin is upon them to make up the the days that the person uh, you know so that he, as long as they're able to make up the days for that person who passed away. And that, according to the speech of uh, the Prophet Asam, they call him Nabi Asam, Man mata wa alayhi siyamun, sama anhu wa liyuhu. The Prophet Asam said, 
whoever dies and he has fast remaining, uh, then it's upon his guardian to make up uh, them fast. Yeah. Uh, on his behalf. And that is Bukhari Muslim, so it's Sahih Hadith. Wa waliuhu wa arithuhu o qalibuhu. So his guardian or his inheritor or his, uh, uh, you know, his uh, relative. Wa yajuzu an yasuma anhu jama'atun bi adad al ayyam allati alayhi fi yawm wahid. Qala al Bukhari, qala al Hassan, in sama anhu, salafuna rajulun yawm al wahid jaza. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِيٌ أَوْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلِيٌ لَا يُرِيدُ الصَّوْمَ أَنْهُ أُطْئِمَ مِنْ مِنْ تَرْكَتِهِ أَنْ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِسْكِينٌ مِسْكِينٌ بِأَدَدِ الْأَيَّامِ الَّتِي تَمَكَّنَ مِنْ قَضَائِهَا لِكُلِّ مِسْكِينٍ مُدٌّ مُدٌّ بُرٌّ وَزْنُهُ بِالْبُرِّ الْجَيِّ Jiramat. So, mashallah, here it shows excellent the ease here. The, and um, he mentioned the Sheikh that it's permissible to fast uh, for the person, a group of people. That each one of the people, yeah, they fast one day for him. So, for example, there's 30 days, there's 30 people. Each one on that one particular day, for example, there's 30 of us, and you know, a person passed away. He's got no family. For example, he's a river to Islam, you know, and he has no family and he had some days to make up. We, are, we One of his close friends knows that he had certain amount of days. He made it Mr. Month, for example. So we, 30 people, we, we could make all fast one day and we made it up for him. As Bukhari mentioned, that Hassan, you know, Hassan mentioned, uh, Hassan uh, meaning uh, Hassan, the grandson of the Prophet, that if uh, if the 30, uh, 30 people fast on one day, it's permissible. And if there is, uh, he hasn't got a guardian, or uh, he hasn't got, uh, or his guardian doesn't want to fast on his behalf, then it's upon him, to uh, his guardian, to, or the, his relations, or whoever, to feed poor people every day from the money that uh, he left behind. Yeah. So uh, feeding a poor pe a person for the number of days uh, that he needs to make up. And for every uh, miskin, there should be a mud. And we mentioned mud or bali, and his weight should be of uh, uh, half a kilo and, uh, uh, and uh, 10 grams. So uh, 10 grams and, uh, sorry, uh, and 10 grams and half a kilo. Yeah? So then the Sheikh mentions, إخواني هذا أقسام الناس في أحكام الصيام شرع الله فيها لكل قسم ما يناسب الحال والمقام فأعرفوا حكمة ربكم في هذه الشرعية واشكروا نعمته عليكم في تصحيله وتيسيره واسعلوه الثبات على هذا الدين إلى الممات so then uh, the Sheikh, he goes on to say, oh, oh, oh my dear brothers, these categories of people and the, the rulings of fasting is what Allah has legislated uh, in this so for every type of people, yeah, for every category. What is suitable for them and their situation and, uh, you know, in their case, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so no, the, uh, the the wisdom of your Lord in His uh, Sharia, yeah, in His legislation, and thank uh, your Allah for the many blessings that He's placed upon you and the ease that He's granted you, and ask Allah for firmness, firm, uh, being firm upon this religion until we until the death. Then the Sheikh he finishes with the dua, and he finishes. Uh, then he said. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبا حالت بيننا وبين ذكرها ذكرك اللهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبا حالت بيننا وبين ذكرك واعف عنا تقصيرنا في طاعتك وشكرك وادم علينا لزوم طريق إليك وحب لنا نورا نحتدي به إليك اللهم أذقنا 
حلاوه مناجاتك واسلك بنا سبيل احل مرضاتك اللهم انقذنا من درقاتنا وايقظ وايقظنا من غفلات غفلاتنا والحمنا رشتنا واحسن بكرم بكرمك قصتنا اللهم احشرنا في زمره زمره المتقين والح والح والحقنا بعباد بعبادك الصالحين وصلى الله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين so the sheikh finishes with saying oh allah forgive us the sins that pose as a barrier between us and you your and your remembrance or oh, and pardon us for our um our um the business in being obedient and grateful uh, being grateful to you keep us firm upon the path to you grant us light by which we can uh, be guided to you O oh Allah, grant us the sweetness of holding firmly to your worship and take us to the path of those uh, whom you are pleased with. O oh Allah, give us protection from humilia- humiliation and uh, keep us awake from our negligence and uh, inspire us to be guided and uh, beautify with your bounty uh, our intentions. O oh Allah, resurrect us along with the pious join us with your righteous uh, slaves and may peace and blessings of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family members and his companions with that we finish uh, and uh, inshallah we'll have Bruce, uh, Shad give you uh, the lesson tomorrow subhanallah wa bihamdik asharu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk